Hi, uh, my name is Brandon James. This is season eight for me with the San Antonio Spurs by way of Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, in a few moments, you're going to hear voices, voices from the people in our organization that make up Spurs sports and entertainment. The reason being, and the reason you have yet to hear from officially from our organization is because we're listening. We're pressing pause amidst all the, that's going on to listen to our people, what they're feeling, what their experiences have been, what we can do together to impact change. This listening will be ongoing. You're about to hear stories about pain, racism has caused, but there's so many other areas we need to continue to listen and learn about. From the systematic and oppressive constructs we need to change, economically, the law, access to education, prejudices and biases. The list goes on and on. Please join us in our conversation as we listen to the voices and then walk with us towards real change in a society that treats everyone with dignity, respect, and equality. Neither of my parents were born in the United States. My mom, West Africa, my dad, Central America. And the joke I've always had with my sisters is that what bubble do we circle on those standardized race questionnaires? My dad is Hispanic, my mom is African and Middle Eastern. The reality, however, is that my race was never for me to decide in a literal biological sense, but also in a societal construct sense. You see, my race was decided for me when I got called a nigger a few weeks ago by a white man running down the street. My race was decided when I had to pick a friend up in high school from the next subdivision over because their parents didn't want them hanging out with a black kid. My race was decided by me when I got told by a group of peers that they were surprised that I had read so many books but they shouldn't have been surprised because in fact, I talked white. I've been fortunate enough to work with an organization that has entrusted me with a leadership role. And I can assure you that there's a good number of people that think I got here because of my race and not in spite of. But the truth of the matter is that I've been second guessed since I was a kid. As a black man, every day you have to prove that you belong, that you earned your seat at the table based on your merits, based on your character, not based on the filling of a quota. In fact, I've been trying to prove myself for so long that I've now convinced myself that I do belong. And it's now my personal responsibility to ensure that every young black boy that I encounter also feels that he too is adequate and that he belongs. And it's a burden that I'm honored to carry, but it's one that I wish I didn't have to. This is every day. This isn't a bad apple cop or a societal rough patch. This is years of systematic bigotry and oppression being brought to light because of an abundance of video documentation. Our stories and anecdotes as black people clearly weren't cutting it. The movie depictions weren't resonating deep enough. It seems that some people needed to see with their own eyes the life leave a black man's body at the hands of an evil and sick white police officer. And that's apparently what it took to get people's attention. But now that we have it, I just want America to understand that this isn't new. This is the world we live in. This is, this is our world. So I've never experienced the level of torture that George Floyd did. I can in no uncertain terms tell you that I've often felt less than. And in a metaphor metaphorical sense, we as black men have felt a knee on our necks since we've been born.